A few months ago, we had a couple of parents reach out asking if we would produce something about Roblox. As someone who plays and loves video games, I thought it sounded like a fun project, but I hadn't really engaged with Roblox. But I did know one thing for sure. It's incredibly popular with young players. Writing about it would give me a chance to finally discover what all that fuss was about. Yet as I dove into researching Roblox, the more my excitement dimmed and the more my discomfort grew. So what's up with Roblox? To say Roblox is a game isn't entirely accurate. Roblox isn't a singular video game. Instead, it's a tool set to make video games and a platform to play those games. So Roblox is more of an ecosystem with thousands upon thousands of unique game experiences that are designed by the community, the other players inside Roblox. You can play crude facsimiles of other games like Call of Duty or Madden. You can join a role-playing game where players have virtual lives and jobs and relationships. This variety attracts a large quantity of players. This guy, Roblox's CEO David Buzuki, has said he wants Roblox to become a billion player platform. What's more notable, however, is the age of Roblox's player base. Roblox self-reported that 47% of their player base is 12 or younger. Half of the people who play aren't even teenagers yet. Beyond this, during the COVID-19 pandemic, half of all kids in the US under the age of 16 were playing Roblox. So Roblox is a free platform to make and play games that's incredibly popular with kids. But here's where we arrive at some of the uncomfortable parts of Roblox. The first thing to look at is the way that Roblox makes money. Remember, it's free, but anyone who's had a kid in their life ask them for V-Bucks and Fortnite will have a decent understanding of what we're about to talk about. Actually, Fortnite can provide a decent comparison. Free-to-play games often make their money by selling digital cosmetics or skins that change the way the in-game character looks. In both Fortnite and Roblox, players can exchange real money for the in-game currency. V-Bucks in the case of Fortnite, Robux in the case of Roblox. These in-game currencies are then used to buy those cosmetics. This system is intentional, and it serves to muddy the actual cost of the cosmetics cosmetics the games are selling. Sure, you may have converted your actual money into the in-game currency, and most players are aware of the conversion rates, but it's harder for the average 10-year-old to think of that in-game currency as actual money. It's Monopoly money. It's chips at a casino. On top of this, both Roblox and Fortnite create false scarcity for skins. Because they are a digital good, there's no true supply limit, but that doesn't mean you can't limit how long they are available for. If a player misses a skin while it's purchasable, they may never be able to buy it again. This leads to a pressure to buy quickly without thinking. Where Fortnite and Roblox are different though is the existence of Roblox's avatar shop, where players can resell their skins to other players. It's basically a stock market, but with Roblox skins. This is Roblox's homepage. If we just click the avatar shop and then collectibles, we arrive at something that looks totally normal, but only gets more jaw dropping the more you study it. A shop where any Roblox user, no matter their age, can gamble, potentially making big real life profits, but more likely losing some or all of their investment. If this sounds like a lot of psychological trickery to get 10 year olds to spend money, that's because it is. Fortnite was sued by the Federal Trade Commission for containing dark patterns to trick players into making unwanted purchases. And regulators have also been taking a serious look at Roblox for similar reasons. The long and the short is this. Roblox and games like it, despite being free, often use predatory tactics to manipulate young people into spending money, while effectively introducing them to the same psychological designs used in gambling. To introduce the second distressing aspect of Roblox, I'd like to rewind to when I was 12. At the time, I wasn't allowed to play games online, but my best friend, who is still my best friend, played this online game called RuneScape. I decided to go behind my parents' back, don't do this kids, and make an account. 
At the time, it was a pretty common thing to walk around the starting town and type looking for GF or looking for BF. My friend and I quickly used this to our advantage by making female characters and swindling people who were looking for a girlfriend out of their stuff. My mom eventually found out, I got into huge trouble, and I'm happy to say we've both been long reformed from our catfishing ways. But the significance of the story is twofold. It was easy for me to access the game without my parents' permission, and it was easy for me to pretend to be someone I'm not. Even today, with games like Roblox, it's extremely easy for anyone of whatever age and for whatever purpose to pretend to be just another kid. And Roblox's social systems and designs don't help. The default settings in Roblox are the least safe, allowing new accounts to message and be messaged by anyone and there's no real way to verify the age of users. Of course, some, if not most players, will play Roblox and never encounter any of these negative aspects, but taking into account the average age of Roblox's player base, it's important to recognize and call out how easily the platform provides inlets for bad actors to access these younger demographics, giving them a footing to take the relationship beyond Roblox and into spaces with even less moderation like Discord or Instagram. All of this together is a big reason why the National Center on Sexual Exploitation put Roblox on their dirty dozen list, a list of popular companies that are facilitating, enabling, and even profiting from sexual abuse and exploitation. We reached out to the National Center on Sexual Exploitation and asked about Roblox. They reiterated, there is highly inappropriate content on Roblox that kids can easily access even with the parental controls turned on. And it seems that Roblox has not yet taken action in response to this criticism. As the National Center on Sexual Exploitation told us, unfortunately, we have not seen any progress around child safety at Roblox since they were placed on the Dirty Dozen list. And while many companies do respond to us and take us up on our offer to meet in order to work on solutions together, Roblox has ignored our multiple outreach attempts. We've covered a lot in this video, but it's worth saying again. Many players never have any problems with any of the things we've talked about. Still, as caring adults, it's important to be aware of these risks and use the wisdom and discernment that God has given us to set and encourage healthy boundaries for the young people we care about. We'll leave you with Paul's encouragement to the Church of Philippi. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. How can you know whether someone actually is who they claim to be online? Have you ever had anything weird happen to you on Roblox? Thank you.